Hi everyone, welcome to day two of Sefer Tomer Devora. Uh, just to recap day one, in uh, Who is God Like You, it's, it speaks about how uh, Hashem uh, endures the insult that we provide to Him as He gives us the ability to walk, uh, and He gives us uh, the movement in our limbs, and through you know these limbs, we use them to has uh, shalom uh, sin against Him, and yet He... He doesn't remove the ability to use them. He endures the insult and allows us uh, the strength uh, to continue uh, using them. Uh, so very interesting. So we are now on day two. Who pardons iniquity? Behold, this attribute is greater than the previous one. For whenever a person commits a transgression, a destructive being is created, as stated in the Mishnah, Avos 4.13. He who commits a single transgression acquires against himself a single accuser. And this accuser stands before Akadosh Baruch Hu and declares, So and so created me. Considering that no being in the world exists without be the bestowing of life from Akadosh Baruch Hu, then this destructive being which stands before him, with what sustenance does he exist? The strict measure of justice would justify that Akadosh Baruch Hu should, he should claim I don't nourish destructive beings. Go to the one who made you and derive your sustenance from him. The destructive being would then immediately descend and take his life or cut him off from the spiritual source, or he would receive his deserving punishment until the destructive being would cease to be. Nevertheless, a Kadosh Bohu does not do this. Rather, he bears and tolerates the sin, and just as he nourishes the entire world, he nourishes and sustains this destructive being until one of the three things happens. Either the sinner repents and destroys and nullifies its destructive being through his acts, acts of penance, or the righteous judge nullifies it through the suffering or, or death of the sinner, or he will descend to Gehinom to repay his debt there. This is also the explanation of Cain's plea. Is my, is my sin too great to bear? Beratius 4.13, which are sages, interpreted as you tolerate the entire world, meaning you nourish and sustain. Is my sin so severe that I cannot tolerate it? Meaning to sustain it, the destructive being that is, until I repent and rectify the sin. Thus that God nourishes and sustains the evil creature created by the sinner until he repents represents a great quality of tolerance. From this, man should learn to what extent should be toler be to he should be tolerant. He should tolerate the wrong of his fellow and his harm, even though he harmed him to such a degree that the harm he caused him continues to exist. He should tolerate this until the, his fellow rectifies the wrong himself, or it, meaning the harm, disappears on its own. And the same applies to other situations. And removes transgression. This is a very great attribute, for when God forgives a sinner, he does not convey his pardon through an emissary. Rather, the Holy One himself grants the pardon as it is written, for with you is forgiveness, Tehillim 130 verse 4. What is the nature of this forgiveness? He washes away the sin as it is written, for God has washed away the filth of the, of the daughters of Zion. Yeshaya 4.4 4. Similarly, it is written, and I will sprinkle purifying waters upon you. Yeheskel 36.25 This, then, is the attribute of removing transgression. He sends purifying waters and removes and washes away transgression. A person should behave in exactly the same manner. He should not say, why should I rectify what so-and-so corrupted or ruined? This should not be said, for when man sins, a Baruch himself... Not, not, by any, not by way of any emissary rectifies his corruption and washes away the filth of his sins. From this a person should understand to be ashamed to return to his sinful ways, for the king himself cleanses the filth of his spiritual garments. This concludes Day 2 of Tomer Devorah.